What's up guys, this is Nick from stridewise.com in Brooklyn, New York, and the Chelsea boot has gotten an upgrade. I'm taking a look at the newest and most unusual Chelsea boot on the market, the Holt boot from Helm. So Helm is an Austin, Texas-based shoe company that was founded in 2009 by Joshua Bingaman. Interestingly enough, they used to be based in Turkey, but they moved over here a little bit later on. And now they're very well known as like sort of a fixture of the Austin shoe scene. The boots are very sturdy and they age well, but they're also very modern and eye-catching. They're well known for this strip of composite rubber running through the midsole of most, if not all, of their shoes, this white strip here. Some boot purists don't like that white strip. They think it makes the boot look less traditional. There are a lot of traditionalists out there in the world of boots, but that's what makes like Helm stand out. They make boots that are old-fashioned, but also modern and sort of experimental. And nowhere is that more evident than this new Chelsea boot. I've never seen a Chelsea boot before with this uh, V-shaped elastic here. It almost makes them look like Chelsea boots from the future. Very, very unusual sort of shoe. Uh, the V-shape serves no like a functional benefit. It's really just aesthetic. But the idea is that it makes the boot look more sleek and streamlined. Now it's not like a lot of dress Chelsea's out there because a lot of people when they think of Chelsea's they think of boots like Iron Williams or Carmina which sort of like really hug the foot and look very sleek and can almost be dressed up. Some people wear them with suits. That's not the case with these more rugged and uh, sort of more thick sort of boots that you got here with the Holt. Adding to the rugged slightly outdoorsy component of the shoe is the mini lugs at the bottom of the shoe. This is made from four pieces of leather I believe as well. You've got a nice discreet pull tab on the back here to help you with getting it on and off which is always welcome on a pair of Chelsea's and in addition to the unusual elastic you've got these hand stitched accents here that give you like three stripes at the bottom of the V and also a couple on the back so that yeah combined with the V-shaped elastic you really do have a boot that does kind of look like it's a Chelsea from the future but let's take a close look at the leather so you can see what you're dealing with here now before I go on, I want to make it clear, uh, if you like these boots or any boots on Helm, you can get a discount of 15% if you use the code STRIDEWISE at checkout. This is not a sponsored video, they didn't pay me to say any of this, but I do tend to quite like Helm boots, so uh, I got to talk to them and see if we can do some sort of discount for my viewers. And I got you one, so STRIDEWISE at checkout if you like these boots or any of the boots and you get 15% off. Uh, if you don't like them though, no worries at all. So let's take a close look at this leather. So as you can see, I've been wearing these boots for many weeks. They're nice and beat up. Uh, although this one panel of leather on the back of the shoe is a bit grainier than I would like it to be. So that's just this boot. So my boots are like seven eighths awesome with the leather, which is a pretty good ratio. But yeah, this, this one here did not come out super perfect. And uh, this leather is called Balthazar leather, which is my favorite name for a leather. And uh, it's full grain leather. So that means it's made from the top layer of the animal's hide. Basically, it's the best layer of leather when you want boots that will age well, like relative to split hide and genuine leather and that kind of stuff. So the boot is also available in dark gray, but this is dark natural, a color I've never heard of before because natural colored leather is undyed. It's the color of the animal's skin, like you can see on these Parkhurst boots and Oak Street boots. This leather is indeed dyed a little in the tanning process. The idea, they told me, is to make the leather look the way natural leather does after about a year of wear and conditioning, by which time the color is deepened, which I think is pretty cool. It's an interesting approach to uh, making a leather color. As far as the tannage goes, this is chrome tanned leather produced over 28 days in a third generation family owned tannery slash rum distillery in the Dominican Republic called B Leather Tannery, which was founded in the 1940s. I should apologize in my last review of this leather uh, on the Zind boot, I said it was vegetable tan because that's what Helm told me, but it turns out it's chrome tan. I'm not totally sure if the blue here at the top of the boot is from my indigo jeans or because chrome tan leather gets blue from the chromium salts. Uh, but uh, yeah, it is it's, it's chrome tan, which makes for a slightly more flexible leather. Although a lot of guys do prefer vegetable tan leather because it looks a little bit cooler as it ages. And it's not as bad for the environment. It's more old fashioned. Chrome tanning is, it is it's very bad for the environment. The leather is hot stuffed during the tanning. So the hides are put in a bath with melted waxes and oils for a long period of time. And that gives it a lot of luster. And then it's buffed to add even more shine. So it has a nice depth of color to it and a lot of pull up. That's color variation. So the only real downside to this sort of super oily leather is that it sometimes lightens on the toe break as you can see here. But otherwise, yeah, it's a really, really oily, waxy, uh, lustrous, shiny sort of leather that a lot of guys like. Now, I've taken care of this leather. Uh, Helm really recommends you use Black Rocks Leather Enrich. That's for conditioning, softening, moisturizing, and extending the lifespan of the leather. They actually sent me a little jar of it to show in the video, and I totally left it at home because I'm a giant idiot. So this is what it looks like. This is me on my iPhone. 
And uh, it's an old natural product, right? So it's made from carnauba wax. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. No, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. But carnauba wax comes from a palm tree, a type of palm tree that only grows in northern Brazil, which makes sense because these shoes are actually uh, handcrafted in Brazil. Now you can apply it to your boots with your hand. Uh, or they also sent me this rag, this Helm branded rag, which they sell for five bucks if you want to have a fancy rag to apply conditioners with. Although for some reason they made it with indigo. Uh, and so you need to make sure that if you do get this rag, you got to make sure you don't wash it in the washing machine with your other clothes because it will bleed indigo all over them. So, you know, you can always just use an old t-shirt if you'd rather do that. All right, let's talk about the sole. So this is a slightly chunkier sole than you might be used to for a Chelsea boot, which are often dressy and sleek. Although there are many exceptions to that rule, uh, including Red Wings Weekend at Chelsea, which I've reviewed. And this boot here, the Holt, which is actually a leather outsole, which confers some flexibility, with rubber lugs added to help with grip. The lugs are not Vibram, by the way, if you're wondering. Helm actually came up with this sole themselves. Then there's the famous white strip made from composite rubber. Then you've got a leather insole and a plastic shank. The most striking thing when wearing these boots is the footbed, which is unusually cushy. The footbed is made from a foam-like substance. And I've asked them a million times to tell me what exactly it is, and they always say they'll find out, and then I don't find out. Um, but it's a lot squishier than a regular boot. This is a very important point here. And combined with the leather lining, it makes for a very kind of pampered feeling on your foot. And the shock absorption is good as well. The sole and the upper are attached with a Blake Rapid stitch, which is sort of like halfway between a Blake stitch and a Goodyear welt. So it's not as flexible or lightweight as a Blake stitch, which is like more common on dressier shoes, but it is much, much easier to resole than a regular Blake stitch. Finally, the footbed also comes with a quote under the heel, which changes depending on the season. So yours might be different to mine, but mine is a quote from the Welsh poet Gwyn Thomas. The beauty is in the walking. We are betrayed by destinations. Now as for the fit and the sizing, Helm is very celebrated in the big foot community. Uh, not the Sasquatch, but rather people with large feet. The sizes of these shoes go from six to 16, which is a very impressive range. And they also are available in double E widths as well. So people with wide or large feet, they're always very happy to find a company like Helm. And they fit true to size. So I'm an 11.5 on a brand device. These boots are 11.5 and they fit just fine. Uh, as for the comfort, I've already talked about that a bit in the sole section. I'm bad at kind of restricting that conversation to the fit and sizing section. But just to recap, uh, the footbed is really, really nice and soft, very unusual. I can always kind of uh, tell that I'm wearing a helm boot when I put on a pair of their boots because they all have this really nice, soft footbed. The shock absorption is very, very good as well. The arch support is very nice because of their shank. Honestly, the main downside uh, with these boots is that the break-in is not fun at all. Like, I'm not gonna say every single thing about this shoe is positive. The break-in totally, totally sucks. This has been the same with all of my other helm boots as well. Uh, and these were, these ones were especially rough. Uh, when I got them, I could really only wear them for uh, like an, a couple of hours at a time before I had to take them off and, you know, kind of knead my feet a little bit and then put on some sneakers. So. The first few times I was wearing these, I would bring sneakers with me in case I had to get out of these shoes. Eventually I softened up though, and now I can walk in them for very long stretches of time without losing big chunks of my heel. But I did lose chunks of my heel the first few times I wore these. So, you know. now, as far as the price goes, uh, prices change a little bit at Helm sometimes. Like the Zind boot, the last one I reviewed from Helm, it was like 400 bucks when I reviewed it, now it's 350. So I don't know what the price is gonna be by the time you watch this video, sir, but uh, at the moment these are $350. But if you use my discount code, they are going to be 15% uh, less, which is going to put them at under $300, which is a very good deal, I have to say. Uh, sometimes in the past, Helm boots, they were on the pricier side, but they've been adjusting their prices. $350 is a pretty decent price for these. Like, that's not much more than a Red Wing shoe. And given that these are sturdy and they're going to age well and they're resolvable and everything, I think $350 is like a, not the best price in the entire world, but I have no complaints with it. Use that discount code, get it to under 300 bucks, and then it's a, it's a very good price. For a sturdy, resolvable, cool boot like this, under 300 bucks, uh, that's, a, that's a good deal if I say so myself. All right, so what are the upsides of the Helm Hold boot? Uh, for starters, it's a small thing, but uh, big sizes, right? Like they go all the way up to size 16. That's really, really good for a lot of guys. And also they have double E widths, which is cool. And not a lot of companies do that. So uh, they really, they put effort into having like enough types of sizes for like a very wide variety of feet. That's pretty cool. Um, the V-shaped elastic is cool, man. I mean, I know it might be divisive. There are some people who don't like it. Just like there are some people who don't like the white strip here, but like that combined with the white strip, combined with the little hand stitched uh, accent there, like I just thought like a Chelsea was a Chelsea was a Chelsea like before I found these boots, but they actually managed to, I won't say reinvent, but to really 
add a very interesting thing to the uh, Chelsea boot Parthenon, you know what I mean? Like uh, it's very hard to stand out in the world of boots, especially these sorts of uh, heritage-y kind of boots that I tend to review on my channel. And uh, Helm has managed to make a Chelsea boot that stands out. It's unusual, it looks different, but it doesn't totally buck tradition. It's got a good balance of old and new. Um, I think it's cool. It's a very individual thing, but I think it's pretty cool. The dark natural leather on that note is also pretty cool. I should probably improve my vocabulary and stop saying cool. But I like this color here. I haven't seen it before. I like that they went for the color color of a natural boot after a year of wear. I like how waxy it is. I like how much pull up it has. It has all that color variation throughout it. I like the luster in this sheen. I think it's a pretty cool leather. It's not vegetable tanned, but um, it's still, it looks good. And I think it's gonna age pretty well. I just think it's funny that the brand was like, people like natural leather, but they really like natural leather after a year. Let's make something that looks like that. Like, I don't know, I think it's kind of a, a funny approach. I like it, I'm a fan. Uh, the lugs on the outsole, a lot of Chelsea out there have like very flat soles. These have a good amount of grip to them. I'm a fan of that. Footbed, very cool. Like when I think of a helm boot, I think of that soft footbed. It's what stands out the most in my memory. It's like really, it, it's, it's interesting. It reminds you this is like a, not a very, very, very traditional boot company. It's like a company that tries to innovate and offer something new with their shoes. You get that with the white strip? Yes, with the V elastic here, yes. The footbed is the one that you're really gonna be thinking about the most when you're walking around in them. And on top of that, yeah, you got the decent arch support in there with the shank, you got good shock absorption. So the comfort I was, uh, I was pretty happy with, you know? And then finally the price, uh, 350 bucks. If it was more expensive than that, I'd be a bit upset about it. 350 I think is a fair price for like this sort of uh, cool looking, resolable, long lasting kind of boot. And of course, with my discount code, get it under 300 bucks. That's a very good deal. So, you know, if I say so myself, I'm pretty happy I was able to get you guys that discount. All right, now there are some downsides with this boot. Uh, the break-in sucked. It was not fun. Um, my feet were very sore the first several times I wore these boots. It's not like a, like a Dayton boot where my feet were screaming at me for two weeks straight. Uh, they're not, no, by far, they're not the worst break-in I've ever had on a pair of boots, but nonetheless, there, there is a break-in. Don't expect it to be that fun the first few times you wear it. It's not buttery, buttery soft. Uh, speaking of buttery soft, the leather is soft, right? It's chrome tanned leather. And I say that because I've noticed kind of a movement lately among uh, Goodyear Welty boot kind of people where they're kind of like vegetable tan leather or nothing. Like they don't want chrome tan leather anymore. This is chrome tanned. Um, it's really a very individual thing as to like what you like the most out of your leather. Um, this is chrome tan. That's why it's kind of soft. That's why it's got a nice luster and everything else. Uh, it's not veg 10. Some people care about that. Uh, also, they're made in Brazil. They're not made in the US. If you care about that as well, that could be an issue for some people. Um, also, the white strip in the sole. There are people who think it's absolutely hideous. I think it's cool. It's completely subjective, so I can't say it's a pro or a con, really. I like it, but there's no shortage of people who don't like it. And on that note, you've also got this V-shaped thing here. You've also got these stitched accents here. Uh, it's an unusual boot. It's a weird boot, right? It is a boot that, um, you know, it tries to respect heritage boots while offering something new to the category. I think they succeeded at that. But if you are a traditionalist, and in the world of boots, there is no shortage of people who are traditionalists with their boots. They want their boots to be just like the ones their granddad wore, which I, I totally get. I get that's a big part of the appeal of heritage fashion. Um, this is a bit more modern and unusual. So if you don't want your boots to stand out even a little bit, if you want them to be very old fashioned, uh, then this is not the brand for you. All right, so that's it. Those are my thoughts on the Holt boot from Helm. I've got a written review in the description below, which uh, is even more detailed if you can believe it. And I've also got pictures and stuff like that. Um, I put a lot of work into the articles as well. I don't think anyone reads them, but they are there. If you wanna check them out and click around my site and that kind of stuff. And uh, make sure you subscribe here as well, because I've got a whole lot more boot reviews, denim reviews, and other kinds of stuff coming up.